What's up, Hacker Nation? Holla at your boy, I'm back at it again. First off, let me say congratulations. You figured out someone's public IP address. Boom. And now you're wondering, what does that even mean? And what do I even do with it? Do I put it in my Google browser? Do I put it in my Facebook page? Do I put it in my girlfriend's... Well, all those might seem like great ideas. That's noob level status, and you're a hacker. So grab those shades, grab those hoodies, because it's gonna get dark in here real quick, and I'm gonna show you what's behind a public IP address hacker style. Ice camera action. All right, guys, let's jump into it. So you found some public IP addresses. That's great and all. So now what do we do? Do we go over to Central Ops or Who Is, and do we do an NS lookup or do we get DNS records? Even though all that sounds fun and all, that's not what we're here to do. We want to go behind the scenes and find out exactly what these IP addresses are hiding behind them and what can we do with them. So for that, we're gonna come over here to Shodan. If you're not familiar with Shodan, Shodan is a search engine for everything on the internet. So while Google and other search engines index only the web, Shodan indexes pretty much everything else from water treatment facilities, yachts, medical devices, traffic lights, wind turbines, license plate readers, smart TVs, refrigerators, anything and everything you can possibly imagine that's plugged into the internet, Shodan gets it indexed and you can find it. So go ahead and create yourself an account or even if you don't create an account, you can use it for free and you can plug in anything you want and do a search on it. Real quick, on a high level, there are some filters and you can filter very specific items. Here's your basic search queries. You can look for Apache web servers. You can filter again through HTTP. You can do SSH filtering. You can also filter by doing screenshots. So what this search filter will do, will go out and search for RDP protocols that have been compromised by ransomware. Uh, as you can see here, tension in your data has been encrypted. Computer has been encrypted. Files have been encrypted. So all these IP addresses have been compromised by ransomware through RDP. That sucks. And then here are your restricted filters. So if you're a big baller and you have an enterprise or corporate account, you can actually do filtering by specific vulnerabilities or um, specific CVEs that are out there, which is pretty cool. Well, that's just a high overview of some of Shodan's capabilities. There are tons of things you can do in Shodan. We want to know what's sitting behind our IP addresses. So let's go ahead, grab our IP address and pop it in to Shodan and see what comes up. So right off the bat, we have our general information, web technologies, as well as vulnerabilities correlating to their open SSH 7.5 port 22. They also have port 8080 open, 8081, and 8083. It looks like these ports are IP webcam servers. Let's go ahead and navigate to it and see what comes up. Authentication required. And here we are in their IP webcam. Um, video archive, video chat drivers, video rendering, browser. All right, and it looks like we have a live feed of their webcam from Canada. I wonder 
And as you can see, you can do a ton of stuff in here. You can even do two-way audio. So I wonder if I turn this on, I could probably talk to them and tell them to do some social distancing. Which it looks like they're doing in Canada. It's in video archives. Some of the functionality might not work because of an error. Can't get camera status. Now, I don't know if they know that this is public on the internet. If this is your environment, you might want to take a look at what Shodan is picking up from your public IP addresses. So as we've seen, behind this IP address is an open webcam from Canada. Things you won't get from a basic who is lookup. You won't be able to see that information. You won't be able to see any of the vulnerabilities from there and that's why I like Shodan so much. So let's take a look at our next public IP address and see what it is. So this one is coming from Italy. No vulnerabilities that it knows about. It's like port 50, 60 and 80, 89 are open. Gives us our HTTP header information. Grand stream, I'm not sure what this is. So we're gonna utilize another service called graynoise.io to find more information about this IP address. And Gray Noise is also a free service for you to use, but they also have paid plans for more capabilities. So Gray Noise collects untargeted widespread and opportunistic scans and attack activity that reaches every server directly connected to the internet. Now that's different from Shodan because we are interested in this right here, the attack activity. So let's go ahead and jump into explore and we're going to pop in our IP address and to see what comes back. Now, as you can see, this comes back as a malicious IP address. It's a little bit different information from what Shodan gives us. As we know, it's coming from Italy, which is what we got here as well. It's the general information. And what it does is it scans ports 80 and 8089 looking for specific CVEs. So this IP address has been observed attempting to use remote code execution vulnerability in the HTTP interface of grand stream IP PBX devices. It also says this IP address exhibits behavior that indicates it is infected with Mirai or Mirai-like variant of malware. Gray noise combined with Shodan um, these two these two services make a great team together. Just a high overview of Gray Noise, you can actually do search queries just like Shodan. So if you want to search for RDP scanners, if you want to look for devices that are infected, you can do that. As you can see, it gives us back over four million malicious IP addresses. So let's take a look at our last public IP address. Let's pop it into Gray Noise while we're here and nothing comes back. So Gray Noise doesn't know what this IP address is. Let's go ahead and go over to Shodan, pop it into Shodan, see what it knows about it. And this one comes back from Russia, Sochi, Russia. I think that's where they had the Olympics. And this one is another another webcam. Looks like it's a store webcam. Let's go ahead and see if we can access it. Okay, so port 8080 is open. And, and again, I, I didn't talk about the Shodan plugin, but it's a great feature. Almost every website I go to, I take a look at what's going on behind the scenes with my Shodan plugin and you can actually hit the site from here as well. Um, stream profile, let's do motion JPEG.
and here we are at someone's store just making sure nobody's robbing it it's an audio clip <laughs> So they have audio clips, camera clicks, dog barking, intruder. Oh, it looks like it looks like it might be a shopping mall. And you can do snapshots, change the setup. You could probably change the setup and and lock this device out so nobody can access it. But we're not going to do any of that stuff. We're just here to take a look and see what's connected to the internet and what's accessible through the internet through blatant misconfigurations or just because somebody plugs something in, gets an IP address and doesn't do any type of security setup, you can easily access what's ever connected as you see here. If you don't know what kind of information your IP addresses are giving away, plug them into Shodan, plug them into Gray Noise. Hopefully nothing comes back as malicious or vulnerable or open ports that you don't already know about. Now, I know we barely scratched the surface on what Shodan can do and what Gray Noise can do. So if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notifications button, what are you doing with your life, man? There is more content in the works that you won't want to miss out on. So thanks for watching and hack me outside, bro. How about that?